Uh, right, next up, it's White Holes. White Holes. So this is episode, Series 4, Episode 4. Uh, and this is the... Uh, basically, they try and make Holly... So Holly's the ship's computer, and they try and give her a really high IQ, don't they? Um, and her... There's something goes wrong, and she gets a great IQ, but her lifespan is dramatically reduced. Yeah. And then they encounter something which which they figure out as a white hole, which is spewing time uh, back out into the universe, and everything gets all muddled up and mixed up, doesn't it? So here, this is one of Red Dwarf's favourite things to lean on. Like, they really play with the theories of time, and yeah. they just go for it. I mean, there's a backwards episode where it makes no sense at all, but they just experience everything with the VHS tape being wound backwards. Uh, and so they have some really interesting concepts here, which I'm sure we could break apart. Matt, you saw this episode, didn't you? Yes, indeed yeah. I did. And I was I was a bit surprised to learn that there's actually some theory to support the idea of a white hole. A white hole? <laughs> ah, that, I appear we've nice. uh, entered yeah. the middle of this conversation. <laughs> Yeah, right, everyone's um, going to have to go and watch this now. Yeah, they're going to have to. Though. I'm sure uh, we'll put in the notes all the different episodes. But um, so white holes are an interesting one. Uh, now I got a, I, we had a, a guest on the second uh, episode of the podcast called Dr. Becky, uh, who's an astrophysicist at Oxford University. Right, uh, I'm sorry, I, I opened my mouth now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> And I asked her uh, for a quote uh, about white holes uh, and the possibility of them existing. And this is what she said. She said, I hate to rain on the sci-fi parade, but white holes are completely hypothetical objects. They make sense in terms of the maths of Einstein's theory of gravity, but if they existed, they'd be putting out huge amounts of energy and light into the universe. They would be some of the brightest objects in the entire universe, and they'd be impossible to miss. So I think if they existed, we'd know about it. Having said that, we once thought the atom could not be split, so never say never. I absolutely love that. Although, when they first talked about it on the show what I thought of was not that a white hole could be an actual, even theoretical thing, but I thought about um, reading about quantum entangled black holes instead. Okay. Which apparently that is a, is a thing that is being investigated. Um, the fact that you can have a split entangled quantum particles and one of them go through the black hole and the other one not. And then you were talking about spewing that, mass and matter and time out one side and coming in the other. So that was my first thought. But then, as you said, it, it is a theoretical, a mathematical construct um, as part of Einstein's theories. I, and I think what Dr. Becky there is, is focused on a little bit too much is the, the light element of it. Because within the show, it's more about the time, isn't it? It's about it's spewing yeah. time rather than light and energy. Uh, which which I believe isn't against the laws of physics. So with the time concept in the show, I think they play with the fact that as the, as they get closer to the event horizon, yeah. time is getting like stretched out and becomes like slower and slower until it eventually comes to a stop. So the idea is that you're sucking time in one end and then you're spewing it out the other. But But I think we need to go back to the 90s and, and what people were thinking about black holes then. Now, I'm sure clever scientists were all over it, but as far as we were concerned as, like, science fans, a black hole was a bit of a mystery. It could yeah. have been a, a wormhole. It could have been, you know, a, a magical, mystical thing, whereas now we sort of think of it as just a lot of mass being compressed down to an infinitesimally small thing with a huge gravity well. So yeah. we think of it as it's just a really big object with loads of mass. So at that time, though, we kind of felt like, oh, a black hole was a portal to something else. Where does all the stuff that goes in the black hole, where does it go? Whereas now we're kind of like, well, no, it just stays there. It's yeah. just crushed down. So that's what they were playing with. Spaghettified. Um, Spaghetti. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're right. Uh, but I do think that since the 90s, what we know about black holes is is miles and miles and miles more than than, than what than we know now. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous how much we know now compared to then. Um, so I think for white holes, I think that's possibly possibly a maybe. I think we can give that one a maybe, can't, can't we, as, as a possible existence. I want to fly in the face of the astrophysicist from Oxford there. Well, I don't even know if I'd give it a, a realistic chance of existing. But what I, outside of math, 
which is its own particular universe. But the effects they were describing, sort of the asynchronous time effects, I think you could almost generate those just tidally as you got close enough to a black hole, quite frankly, where literally being on different sides of the same room, you would be experiencing time happening in different flows and at different rates, which would lead to what we saw on screen. Yeah, absolutely. And and that is, there is a cert, there's certainly strong evidence to suggest, I mean, Einstein's special theory of relativity talks all about the time dilation with, with huge amounts of gravity. It's very well documented. Uh, it's good on the films like Interstellar. It's really well done on that. Um, yeah. so there's no, there's nothing to say that it can't happen the other way around. But it was a little clumsy in the corridor where it's just like, right, if you're on that side of the corridor, oh, yeah. time, is, time is going slower for you. But instead of us having like real problems communicating, you just sound a bit slowed down. Yeah. And then so you sound speeded up. And, and things we've watched things like Interstellar now with that wonderful scenario of someone going down to the planet yeah. and that being a very, very long amount of time for the people down. Or no, it was very small for the people on the big wave planet, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, and it was a very long time for the people outside of that. So then to come back and watch that same kind of time dilation, but just either side of a corridor where they, they step to one side and their picture gets stretched out a bit and they go, hello, can you <laughs> hear me? It was, very, it was very charming. You're right though. They play with time quite a lot. There's another episode where they, they find the old, the special stuff to develop the photos, don't they? I don't know if you remember that one. I think it's called Time Slides. And yes, with the photos. They, they, can, they can step into the photos and Lister wants to change his, his history, doesn't he? Yeah, so a lot of that is based around causality. Yeah, and, like Back to the Future okay, stuff. So, so that, yeah, that's like yeah. Back to the Future tropes, whereas yeah. this one is much more like the effects of time sure. and it all getting jumbled up and stuff like that. And I like, I like the the random spewing pockets of time yeah. that like change the order of the conversation. It, it was it was lovely. That was classic, wasn't it? That little scene where they're, they're, they're talking about that, what it is, and the conversation gets mixed and matched all over the place. There's loads of stuff in that episode, though, Dan. I don't know if you're, you're sticking with just time now, but if we're doing what I think we're doing, which is like picking apart some of the some of the physics in yep. that episode, we've got to talk about the the playing pool with, with planets. planets. Oh my word! Plug up the white hole. Yeah. So the concept is the only way to stop this white hole from spewing forth its time is to play four dimensional pool so like yeah. snooker with the with planets. planets yeah uh, the computer comes up with a plan holly comes up with a plan to create a solar flare to push one of the the planets into another planet and then, <laughs> and then put it into the white hole to stop it, it. um yeah. dave lister is like no it, it, the computer's got it all wrong she's put too much top on the the first planet and he's like i'll, I'll take the shot i'll take the shot because i'm good at pool in a pub was absolutely fantastic and and this is the truest thing in order to make the shot properly he downs four pints of lager which as we yeah. all know is the optimum amount of lager to have to play pool absolutely yeah uh but i mean you're right though like i mean what speeds would those planets need to be going at for that to work in in the time frame that it, in the show it was like five seconds yeah. wasn't it it's completely yeah. ridiculous but still great all the same and when you think of like how our moon formed they they're talking about a mars sized planet colliding with the the earth yeah. and, and they don't just bump off each other no. they like they mold together and then just spew out little rings yeah yeah absolutely. or the idea that sending a thermonuclear device would cause a solar flare or that a solar flare could push the mass of an entire planet yeah, anywhere exactly yeah all right that's it we've ripped I mean, them. I mean, there, there were a few weak links in that particular chain, but yeah. it was hilarious it nonetheless. Was, yeah. And of course, the talkie toaster in that episode as well. You can't miss amazing talkie toaster. Oh, my God. 